In this video, I want to explore three easy absolute value inequalities that we can go ahead and solve and then graph. Now we're going to go ahead and solve them and we're going to use interval notation as well as graph the solution so we can have a visual idea. So I think whenever, before you get into more difficult examples, it's always really important to make sure you understand the very, very basic. So let's go ahead and take a look at this first example where we can kind of get an idea of what we're going to do when we're solving absolute value inequalities. So let's say the absolute value of 3q is less than or equal to 9. Okay, so the main important thing when we're solving absolute value inequalities, you want to make sure your absolute value um, is going to be isolated, which in this case it is going to be, right? Then remember, we have two cases, right? So we have 3q is going to be less than or equal to 9. Now, you might have that memorized if that is a and or a or compound inequality, but um, I don't want you to have to feel like you have to rely on that. What I want you to do is immediately just kind of think about this as a number line, okay? So, um, if we kind of look at this and we say, all right, whatever's inside this absolute value has to be less than nine. So let's go ahead and plug in nine in here. Well, let's put a zero there. All right, and then let's go ahead and put nine. Now it's gonna be less than or equal to. Now, and again, we don't know the value of Q, right? So that's gonna be a filled in dot. All right, so well, what the main important thing I want you to understand is like anything less than nine here is gonna be going in this direction. Now remember, the absolute value represents the distance away from zero. So basically what this is saying is the absolute the absolute distance away from zero has to be less than or equal to nine. Now remember, that can be in the positive as well as in the negative direction. So I can also go from negative nine over here, right? And I could say, well, any distance away from zero that's less than nine is gonna be going in this direction, all right? Now, algebraically, how exactly do we go ahead and show that? Well, what we do is we do our two cases. So I can say the positive case, which is just going to be a 3q, um, 3q, sorry, is less than or equal to 9. So I'll say less than or equal to 9. And then if you notice here, though we're looking for this intersection between these two, right? So what when you have the less than or equal to, that is going to produce what we call an and inequality. Okay, so we can say and, and then we can take a 3q. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the neg negative, um, now we're going to use the negative um, case. So therefore we need to flip the inequality. So 3q has to be greater than or equal to a negative nine. All right. So just make sure when you negate it to create that other case that you're now going to go ahead and flip the sign. So now when I go ahead and solve here, I get a q is less than or equal to a three. In this case, divide by three, divide by three, I get a q is going to be greater than or equal to a negative three. All right. Now that is not, this is not the answer, right? <laughs> Hopefully you understand that's not the same answer as that. But this gives us the answer of understanding it's a and inequality. It's the intersection we're looking for. And so to understand this though, to see if we were to kind of graph this inequality here, Q has to be greater, um, greater than equal to negative three. And, right, and it has to be, Q is going to be less than um, or equal to three, right? Because if you were to kind of graph this as you were doing to like the graph this way, Right, and then if you were saying all values that are greater than, equal than negative three, the only distance where they actually intersect here is going to be between negative three and three. Now, how do we go ahead and write that as a compound? I'm sorry, an interval notation. So we're writing interval notation. Basically, what we're just asking ourselves is, based on this graph, how far left does the graph go, and how far right does? I'm sorry, how far is our answer going to be defined to the left as well as to the right? So you can see the farthest left we can go here is going to be a negative three. The farthest right we can go is a positive three. Now, since these two values are going to be defined, we're going to use brackets instead of parentheses. If they were open circles, then we go ahead and use parentheses. All right, let's go and take a look at another example. What if I had here absolute value of a minus five is going to be greater than a six? So again, we have our absolute value is going to be isolated, but now we have the greater than symbol. Now, Hopefully you, if you kind of just recognize this, you say, oh, well, if less than, if less than or less than or equal to is the and, then greater than is going to be the or, and that is correct. However, again, I want you just to kind of think about this, um, again, using this uh, number line so you don't have to feel like you have to memorize this all the time. So here's zero, and let's pretend you forget. Like, let's say you're on a test or quiz and like, you know, the stress and you're like, oh crap, like, should I try to look at my paper, you know, person's paper next to me? No, no, like I gotta remember this, right? So what you do is you say, all right, here's six. Whatever's inside this absolute value, right? A minus five, that has to be greater than six. So it's gonna be an open circle and it's gonna be going that way. But remember, absolute value represents the absolute distance. So the absolute distance away from zero is going to be six, is six right? So again, you could go in the positive, right, numbers. We could also work for negative numbers, right? Because any value that's going in this direction is also going to be six away, right? Again, we don't worry about the positive or negative um, with the direction, we're just caring about the distance. So hopefully you understand that these do not intersect, right? So having an and inequality would yield no solution. 
Um, so what we are going to be considered in this one is going to be the or case. Okay. Now, again, this is not the final answer that we're going to get, right? This is just for us to kind of remember, are we going to be creating a or or an and inequality? So what we're going to do is again, we need to create the positive as well as the negative case. So I'm going to take a minus five is greater than six or a minus five is less than a negative six. Again, remember when I negate, I need to make sure I flip the sign. All right. So now I'm just going to use my inverse operations. So I will add a five to both sides and I get an A is going to be greater than 11. Then here I'll add a five and I get an A is going to be less than a, um, sorry, less than a negative one, right? Um, okay. So now what's kind of is happening and what I kind of want you to see, which is kind of like an important thing, like, Notice how this was like kind of symmetrical, like negative six and six, right? But what happens when I subtracted five, what kind of happened here? Like, if you kind of think about this number line, it still has like kind of the same answer that's kind of going on. But now, like if here's zero, right? Now I'm at negative one and I'm like at 11. Okay. So again, we're going negative one going this way and then one going that way. So basically what kind of happened to the solution set is it, is it got shifted, right? It still is a 12 away from each other. It just got shifted right? So it just got shifted five units to the right kind of way. You can kind of see if you added five to both of those, that's how that solution set got shifted. It's just kind of something interesting um, for you to understand. The same thing that happened here. Remember this original solution was from what, nine to negative nine. But when I multiply by three, what basically I did is I divided those answers by three, right? So what that did is it actually compressed my solution set by three. Again, just something, just wanted to add those in there for you to kind of think about. All right, let's go and take a look at then something more difficult, which is going to be when we have a two-step equation. So this one's not going to be as obvious as like those two um, last two problems as far as how that solution set is going to be defined. So I have absolute value of 3w um, plus 6 is going to be less than, um, let's do, yeah, less than a 12. Okay. So once you've kind of like remembered the less than, the greater than, like again, practice, practice, practice. Don't try to do memorization, just practice. Um, once you kind of feel like you have practiced all of this information, then like, then you should have them kind of ingrained in you and you can remember, oh, less than that's going to be an or just remember when you go ahead and, um, just remember when you go ahead and do the negative case, you got to make sure you just remember when you do the negative case, you have to make sure that you, um, uh, negate the, or flip the sign. Okay. So in this case, I'm going to have a three W plus six is going to be less than 12. That's going to be the positive case. I always like to write and even don't try to like remember what it is, just write and. And then now we need to do the um, negation case. So I say three W plus six is going to be greater than a negative 12, right? All right, so now let's go ahead and use our two-step equations, right? So we always undo addition, subtraction first. Um, oh, did I do the interval in the symbol? I forgot to do the notation. Sorry about that, guys. Um, let's go into figuring out what our interval notation is for this. Right, we got to remember. I said I'll do interval notation. So, sorry, going back to the previous example, how far left did we go? Well, now if this graph was going to continue going over and over and over, we'd go to negative infinity, right? And then it keeps on going negative infinity all the way down to a negative one, which is now undefined. So I'm going to use parentheses. And then the farthest left this section goes is going to be a positive eleven, and then it can keeps on going over and over and over to positive infinity, all right? And then we can group those with just a union symbol. All right, so now let's go and use our two-step equations, right? So I have a 3w um, is going to be less than 6, divide by 3, divide by 3. w is less than 2, and, right, because we've got to remember we're looking for the intersection here. Negative 6, negative 6, so I have a 3w is going to be greater than a negative 18. Divide by 3, divide by 3, w is going to be greater than a negative 6. Okay, cool. So again, like you can graph this twice if you want to, or remember, if you remember that the intersection is, when you're dealing with and, you're just looking for the intersection, right? So I could say negative six, we could say two, I'm gonna do it twice just so, you know, anything greater than negative six is gonna go this way, anything less than two is gonna be going that way. So hopefully you see that the intersection here is between these two, right? That is when they're both true. So when you're dealing with an and inequality, they both have to be true. So now let's go and write this as an interval notation. How far left does this graph go? Well, it goes to negative six. I would use the parentheses because it's not defined, right? It's an open circle. And then how far right does it go? It goes to two, right? So I'm going to go for there and there too. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, then go ahead and check out the next video I have for you here.